Hello and welcome to this Friday conversation of the Lee Summit Town Hall podcast. I'm going to do a special show. It's actually a partner podcast with the Shred Podcast this week. I have Ryan Waters from Shred KC and Jody Rue. Oh. They are here because I wanted to talk a little bit about community and about giving back. So Ryan, like I said, is a, is a local business owner. He owns Shred KC, and he has decided that for the rest of this year, he has a whole plan of just giving back to the community. Ryan, let's just start real quick. What are you doing? Well, not just the end of this year. We're going to go into next year and the year after. We're just going to. I like ambition. Yeah, we're just going to continue to do it. It's going to be an ongoing thing. And the reason we decided to do this because the community at Shred is so strong. You know, we have over 300 members now, and that's the biggest compliment we get from our gym is our community. So with 300 people, us all giving back, that's a lot of people helping out. So, you know, we just recently did a uh, for breast cancer. One of our one of our clients' friends. She was going through chemo and radiation with breast cancer, and she was struggling to pay her bills. So we did a um, fundraiser, and Jody Rue DJ. We have some special classes all throughout the day, and between our clients, we we gathered up thirteen hundred bucks, and then I yeah. then matched it. So we got the girl twenty six hundred bucks, and it was at the perfect timing. You know, she was behind on her mortgage, struggling to buy groceries. So. I mean, that filled her bucket. That felt really good helping her out. Yeah. I, I know, and you guys know this, that that's a subject near and dear to my heart. My wife's is almost a six-year survivor now, and I will tell you, as much as the money, and the money the money does help, but yeah. <laughs> even with great insurance, it, it costs a lot to go through all of that. But even just knowing that there's people there that are doing something to try and help you, to try and be there, that's a, it's a fantastic feeling. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it felt really good. I mean, I was, it was great, and just everybody came through, like the whole Shred family came through strong it was amazing so like i said us all teaming together and doing something great we can help we can help change a lot of lives and so we're going to do uh for veterans day next weekend we're going to have a class that'll be on the 9th right saturday the 9th yep we're going to do a class jody's going to be djing it's a lot of fun the classes we just bring a lot of energy everybody has a lot of fun and we're going to do donations for tiny houses for veterans day and then our next one we have we're going to have a harvester's bucket in the gym so, you know, on any given week, we have hundreds of people coming in and out of there. So if everybody brings a couple cans of uh, food. And then on uh, November, one of the days in November, uh, Saturday, we're going to do a class to get into the class. It doesn't have, you don't have to be a member, but you bring five items of food for harvesters before Thanksgiving. And you can get into the class, you know, for that's your entry into the class. And then we're going to do a coat drive on November 2nd. You get into class with the coat. That's right? tomorrow. Uh, December 2nd. I'm oh, December 2nd. It's sorry, already sorry. here. <laughs> we're not, we're not, we're, we're resi, we weren't ready. December 2nd. So you're entering into class. If you do, you normally do a drop-in. It's a $20 drop-in to come to one of our classes. But it's a, it's $20 to get in or a coat. And then if you bring two coats or gloves or a stocking cap or start, anything to keep you warm, then we're going to give you a free smoothie from Shredlicious, too. Nice. Yeah. And then we're going to do a big event, Shred Education event on the 12th. December 12th? December 12th. Yeah, that's bang, bang, event. bang. And, we got some and, and that'll be and that'll be right here at at Shred in the event space in the back on December twelfth. Uh, bridge space. Bridge, bridge space. What did I say? You said, you said Shred. Yeah. You shredded it it's, out. It's early on a Friday morning. So we're still working out all the details on that. We know it's going to be on the twelfth, and I think it's going to start about six thirty. But we're going to have a lot of vendors to come around. Local vendors, you can shop. And I think your ticket price is going to be a toy uh, to get in. So we're going to give back some toys to some kids in need. And then we're going to do raffles and um, all the vendors, all th- what they're paying to be in here is going to go to donations. And we're going to get some sponsorships around and we're going to try to buy a family and need a car. That that's is big, that's fantastic. Big time. Somebody that can't get to work. And then I'm working, I haven't worked out the details, but I'm working with another sponsor that might match it and bring a car, buy a car for them as well. So that's I'm awesome. A couple different cars for families. That's amazing. That that is that's great, and I think you know we always talk about on on the town hall show we always talk about the importance of being involved. I mean that the whole point of the town hall podcast is that that we are a community and it's easy to get involved, and that you can make a difference in your backyard more than you can. You get more impact anywhere else than you can anywhere else. So so I love hearing this. I love the fact that you know you you and I partner together on a lot of stuff. You sponsor the town hall show and I produce your your shred podcast. And I just I just like the fact that we've we've found people that we can partner with that just just do things around the community. And how easy it is for you to jump in. I mean how how easy for this was this for you just to say, hey, I want to give back. Who needs stuff? We decided on a Thursday. I think it was a Thursday no it was a Friday. Yeah. Friday before the Monday that we're gonna do the breast cancer thing. Sent out an email to all our people and we came up with twenty six hundred bucks. Right. Think about if we have more time to do it, yeah, you know. If we had more time and got more people involved, everybody
Body War Pink. It was a lot of fun. You know, and that's not, we're just, like I said, this is just the rest of uh, 2019. 2020, we're going to roadmap out, you know, try to do something at least monthly for people to give back through our community. And also, we're doing some things, and I can't release all the details yet because we don't have them all in place, but we're working on something called the Image Project. And we're going to take some kids, uh, some high school kids, junior high kids that are struggling with self-esteem, struggling with their weight, and we're going to take them on pro bono and try to change their lives. So we're going to train them, we're going to teach them you know, how to eat. We're going to teach them, you know, to change. That's a great them. idea. And we're, but you know, we're going to go to the superintendent and we're going to have people write in essays about why they think she'd be here. But you take those kids story. I mean, it can impact so many more if they see somebody change like that, you know, we can do it. Well, I think we're just going to try to do it quarterly and try to get a whole new group of kids in there. So troubled youth, whatever. Like I said, we're still working out the details of the image project and image is a acronym that we're using. So, um, it's going to be an awesome deal. I, and I, it was kind of funny how you started it because I think I got a text message on a Friday that says, "Hey, do you have do you have thirty minutes? I, I have ideas." <laughs> and I think that's as, I think that's a, and that's as simple as it was. And we walked down and and you just kind of laid out, "Hey, here's a list for the rest of the year. I want to make these these things happen." I kind of want to get in a little bit to you because you spend a lot of time at your gym, a lot of time on your podcast talking about the mental aspect of. Of fitness that it's not just hitting the gym it's not just eating better that you've got to have that that mental and that emotional side as as, as well so I, I i'm curious how this all kind of fits in with that man we, we talked about um you know the the mindset of happiness on our podcast about happiness about filling your bucket okay we talked about you know you want to do good things to help fill your bucket and that just makes you happy and more confident you know helping give helping give, uh, give back like this that's filling our bucket you know, and, and like, it just feels good to do it. And, you know, if you, if you're struggling, you know, with yourself, if you're struggling with confidence, if you're struggling of what your place needs to be, start to give back to others. And it's going to like, it, it really starts to fill your bucket. And that builds confidence in yourself, which will make you be better at working out and getting more confidence in a weight loss or anything in life. I think, I mean, what do you think, Jody? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta really conquer your fears you know, a lot of people, they get caught up in all the day-to-day -day stuff that we deal with, and we all have stress, and you have to have a way to, to get that out. You know, that's why going to the gym and, and sweating it out is going to make you feel better. That's why, like you said, giving back to your community is going to make you feel better, and it'll come back. You know, never give because you want something in return. That's not what it's all about. You know, we, we all are in place at somewhere of an employment or anywhere that we're working and you got to come together, you know, write down these things that you think are great ideas to give back to your community and start talking about it though. You know, if you don't take the things that are on paper and lift them off and start implicating it into your life daily, you'll never make an impact, you know? So tell your manager at your job, Hey, we should do this. They might not have ever thought about it. Absolutely. You know, well, you touched on one thing you said, give and not worry about getting back. Like, right. You have to give, that's exactly right. You have to give and give and give. And don't worry about trying to get something backed out of it. You know, that's not why we're doing any of this. Anymore. No. We're doing to help people. And we have a strong community of, of like-minded people, you know, and it's everybody's just doing it out of the goodness of their own heart. They're For not, sure. They're not expecting anything back from it than being able to help change some people's lives. Well, I, I think I think what you're talking about though is you're just talking about allowing yourself to have have empathy to be able to For think sure. think about people and their perspectives and there's a difference and that that is just also it's just the right thing to do. It, it's <laughs> it's just the right thing. And you told me a little bit um, off air before before we started that that this is kind of as an adult this is a newer thing for you that yeah. when you were younger that you, you didn't think like this. Young and dumb. <laughs> right, we all been there. <laughs> That's a tough thing to admit, by the way. Yes, it is. Compassion is something, and, you know, my, my ex-wife used to tell me all the time, you need to be more compassionate. And I never, like, it went in one ear and out. <laughs> care, you know, but, right. I mean, you know, for instance, if you see, like, a, you know, a homeless guy, I'm like, well, get a job. It may not be that easy for that man to get a job, you know, or that person to get a job. And you don't know people's struggles. You don't know what their upbringing was. You don't know what happened to them as a child. You don't know their story. To why, why they're or they are there, why they you know what they're doing on the side of the road with a sign, you know, and so you have to be more empathetic, like you said, and and have compassion, and that's something honestly, that's something that's like really grown on me very rapidly in the last two or three years, you know, and like I said, I'll be the first one to admit it. Where you know, if there's somebody that I saw that was you know overweight, I'm like, just get in the gym and work out and stop eating bad food, but they may not know how to eat. 
good food. You know what I'm saying? Or be able to afford it. Yeah, nobody has ever taught them. So that's why, you know, that's why I'm very, I'm more compassionate about that because I know they can come to my gym and we can help them. You know, we have knowledge and that's why we put out the podcast to give people knowledge to help change their lives. And, it, and you know, it's like I said, it's really taken a long time to get compassion, but I have it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, I think, I think that's a, that's a tough thing to admit, and I and I, I I think you should get credit for that because making yourself vulnerable like that to say, hey, I I used to be an a hole. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I used to I used to not think about you and your other perspective, but now I'm I'm learning to do that. I think that's a that's a good thing to do and a hard thing to do. Well, you gotta have compassion, but you also have to make people be responsible for their own actions. You know, like you can't. I mean, because there's plenty of freeloaders out there as well. You know, so you have to be compassionate give, for the people that really need sure. it. And then teach the people that aren't that have more abilities to, to be able to maximize their abilities and see their strengths and be able to build from that and build a life. You know, on the last podcast for people that didn't hear it, I was at an event last last weekend and there was a guy that spoke there. And just four years ago, this guy was a drug addict. He was on the side of the street and, they, and he had the whole crowd laughing because he said, you know, he's addicted to cocaine. He's like, actually, anything I could get to put in my body, I could take it and put in my body. Yeah, like alcohol, drugs, whatever it was. This is four years ago. The guy has built a business that's worth ten million dollars in the last four years from being a drug addict. So anybody can flip their life around, right? But they have to know they can. They have to have the support, and they have to have that laser focus to get out of the element that they're in. But so many people sit in the shit because they they don't know how to get out of it. You know what I'm saying? So helping back, giving back, and you know, work especially this image project, working with kids that may never switch their mindset to believe in themselves. And know that they can do more with their lives. That's what we're trying to reach for. And now you're starting to get into your wheelhouse we're here, which is which is you guys talk a lot about that just that positive attitude and about having to, to learn and to look at things with a different attitude, a different perspective, different lens. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out every cliche yeah. in the book here. Uh, that's the truth though. Um, but that's that's kind of where you guys where you guys come from and, and what you're trying to do with with your show. I, I I tease you guys, call you the meatheads, but 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 that's not what the show is. And 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 like I'm the biggest cynic in the room, um, but that's where you guys come from. Is that is that positive attitude and positive thinking? You know, and it's a choice. You know, we we don't we don't think about it. We we try to overthink everything, and it's just normal by nature. But it's your choice to wake up and be positive. It's your choice to to find a way to use whatever platform you're on to use it in the in the right way. You know, I I mean, like for an example, I love Ellen. I've always wanted to get on Ellen DeGeneres because she uses her pa- platform and she gives back. You know, more than most do. And if we can find a way to give back and have that kindness in our heart and know that it's a choice to be positive and it's a choice to lift people up and it's a choice to come out here and use your light and your energy to to make a difference on the people that you're surrounded around that's when you change lives that's when you change your life you know yep exactly you know just like this uh, breast cancer thing you know that we helped the girl and you know she was three months behind on her mortgage could you imagine how stressed out you would be like if i was three months behind on my on my mortgage or on my rent payment i would be completely stressed freaking out freaking out and she's in radiation you know i can imagine being in her shoes and what she has to go through so for us to be able to go get back to her and put yourself in her shoes to have that relief at least for a little bit you know like it just made us it made everybody feel so good like for it's sure just, it just changes the energy at shred and like you were talking about nick with the mindset of the whole thing you know it's like if you say negative things about yourself, if you have negative self-talk, if you have negative self-conscious thought, you know, you're giving all those negative thoughts power. I mean, once you speak them, once you say I can't do something, you're giving that power. For sure. You know, like, you need to say positive affirmations all the time. And I'm telling you one thing that anybody that can change that's struggling right now with depression or self-esteem or in a bad place in their life, just switch your thoughts. Anything negative that pops up in your head, switch it positive and repeat positive affirmations all the time. You know, and that, I mean, if you're religious with that and you're constant and you don't let those negative thoughts creep in, if they do, shut them down immediately. Shut them down and turn whatever was saying in your head that was negative, turn it positive. Not today, Satan. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, on the flip side of it, though, too, so you were just talking about you know, that, that power that you can give yourself by thinking positive, that power and that feeling that you got because you helped someone else. Turn that mirror, though, too, and just that me pouring into your bucket is going to make you feel great, too. And that's the that's really I think I think the biggest thing, and that it's not hard to do. And before I forget, I want to go. So if people do want to get involved, they want to help out with what you guys are doing to to help out this this local cancer patient, to help out with harvesters, to help out with the the veterans community project. Mm-hmm. Um, what did I miss? The kids, the, the toy drives. Yeah, how can people follow along? How can people learn more about what you're doing and when these events are? So 
we send out emails to our, our to our list so they can either get on the website and su submit their information to our website so they're on our email list or follow our Facebook page, Shred KC Facebook page, and we'll make announcements on there uh, and our Instagram or whatever. It's Shred K at Shred KC. So if you're whatever your platform is, we'll make announcements on there when we're going to be doing everything. Like I said, you don't have a have to, have to be a member to come you know, to, to support this stuff. So if you just want to volunteer, if you want to try one of our classes and you want to get involved, yeah, that's how you do it. Shred, Shred All right, come KC. come sweat it out for a cause. <laughs> you know, one thing I want to touch on too, Nick. I just I'll just interrupt you here. Is uh, I just saw Dang it. <laughs> like in Asia it's like a huge epidemic where people are depressed people are lonely they're suicidal because everybody's in their phone you know they don't they lose touch of those personal relationships because everybody's in their phone and I guess loneliness is like rampant which you would think the way our society is now which everybody's at your fingertips it wouldn't be that way but people just have these relationships with their phone and social media and everything so one thing I could do like if you're lonely or you're depressed get off your phone and start making some friendships go get involved go give back I'm telling you, it's going to flip your life around. Yeah, my grandpa would always say it. Never know a stranger and always try to make someone smile and everything will work out. And, you know, just simply saying hi. You don't have to go into detail. Just a hello to somebody. They might be like, well, they might not even think that they're noticeable, you know. And, and somebody just saying something nice, you know, hope you have a great day. I mean, these are little things that we can all do that's going to change our community. It starts with that. I mean, not all the time can we just give hundreds of thousands of dollars. Not all the time can we donate all of our time. But if you simply just add a little coin or add a little seed, you'll see how that's going to grow and flourish. And it's just going to make everybody around you better. Well, you, you talk a lot about community. I think when we started this conversation, you, were, you said that the, the gym community in there. We've talked about our community at, as a whole and then just just connections to thread back to to what you were just saying and i think that is important to have personal connections personal conversations i was telling a friend of mine the other day that these podcasts i do the the few that i host and the ones that i i produce that's become almost my therapy sessions too like like yeah, i just i look forward to those interactions with people and I, and i love doing the interviews because then i get to learn a little bit about about what makes people tick and, th and their stories and and helping them share so those are that's how i do it that's how I kind of get off, and I sit here, and I've got um, three mobile devices and a laptop surrounding me as we do this. But, but yeah, I mean, that's how I get kind of into the personal thing, and we all have to do it. And you guys, you've got 300 people coming into your gym every week. And, and, and Jody, you you are a trainer there. You you also DJ some of their fitness classes, and you DJ other events. So I, it, I'm i assuming that's how you kind of get your connections as well. Absolutely. I, I really do love being around people. I know not everybody are people persons, but, you know – if if you if you just take a second and you find out what you're really good at you got to you got to use it to your advantage you know we're not all great at everything but we're all great at something and sometimes you know when you find out what your why is we've talked about that before in our podcast when you find out why you are here you're going to feel like you can make an impact you know so my way is making people smile I give them a hug I'm a hugger I make people for <laughs> That's no true. stranger like i literally i will make people that do not even like to touch another person high five shake, shake a hand they will be in less than 24 hours they're hugging me but you know what they see the genuineness in what i do they know that i'm not faking it i'm not trying to like make you think i'm somebody i'm not if you see me on social media posting a motivational speech or if you see me out at a club you're gonna come up to me and i'm gonna be the same person that you saw you know you can't fake the funk you know, people stop trying to fake the <laughs> funk. Don't be somebody you're not. You know, you can't try to be like everybody that you see. You are you. And when you embrace who you are, you know, you all are special. Everybody listening right now, there's something special about you. Just know that. Wake up every morning and remind yourself that you're a badass. Remind yourself that you're going to be successful today. Remind yourself that you're going to do something positive today. And guess what will happen? Those all will happen. But you have to speak it into existence. Stop flirting with your goals and teasing them and go after it. Jump all the way in. Belly flop in. That's what I do. All the way in. <laughs> it's fun. You know, talking about the community, going back to the community at the gym, it's so interesting, you know, to see people come to the gym for the first time. You know, they're nervous. They, like, don't know what to do. Right. Kind of feeling everybody out. But then after, like, a week or a day or a couple of days, you know, and all the trainers, like, welcoming them and Jody hugging them and everything, people get comfortable. And then we partner everybody up in our classes. So then they meet a friend. They partner up with them. And then they're hanging out outside the gym. And then they make all these friendships and everything. Right. And I know I could probably list off ten people that made their best friend at Shred. 
you know, that, that they just they just meet people and it's a community. So you're with like minded people that are have the same goals and everything. So if you are out there and you're you you know, you want some sort of community to be around, go join a gym. You know, like and I'm not I mean I'm plugging shred obviously because we have the best community. <laughs> yeah. Best community, but just go give it a try and I guarantee I have I've heard so many people that have never liked to go to the gym that love shred. I've heard so many people that you know that <laughs> felt no energy at the gyms they've gone to their entire life before they came to Shred. And I'm not just saying that. Like, it's, it's a true story. For real. And once you start working out, like, Nick, you can, like, once you start eating better and you start being more active, don't you feel so oh, yeah. better? Oh, yeah. You feel better, not, not only, like, you feel better, like, with your body changing, but just mental focus, energy, everything. Like, and I don't, I think people don't understand if they're struggling with, like, feeling like shit all the time and crap all the time, that they just need to get in the gym and start working out and taking care of their body and build some relationships and, and your life can completely change and change those, you know, change the words that you say to yourself in your head to everything positive and, like, it could be a night day difference for a lot of you guys listening to this. Right. Out with stress and with success. <laughs> Remind that. Out with stress and with success. You got to keep saying that. You got to keep saying these things. You know, it, it's all your mindset. Your mind is the strongest thing that you got. You know, it, it. your mind tells your hands to move and your feet to tap. It tells your hips to move like a hula hoop, whatever it is. But you got to you got to tell it to do what it's got to do. So if you want to wake up every morning and be negative before your feet hit the ground, maybe you should just rewind and try again. Go back, lay back down, close your eyes, count to 10 and then try again. You know, that rhyme, but it's the truth, you know? <laughs> well, you, you do always. You're always, like, you're always rhyming. <laughs> Hey, I want to I want to reverse just a little bit. I want to go back to to something, Jody, that, that you touched on. So I want to ask you the question. Yeah. What's your why? Why are you Why are you doing these things? Why is it important for you to do what you do? For you to give back? Well, I you know at first I I didn't know I went to school for graphic design. I've always liked art. I love music. I never thought that I'd ever go into the fitness, and it really took. I was at I was hosting a pool party, and you know I'm DJing, and it's making people drink and party, right? Is this still a fun way to get people to have really get loose and relax? But uh, one of our friends had me come shadow some of the coaches at his gym. He's like, I think you'll be a great coach because your energy and your your, your positive attitude. I never even thought in a million. I mean, I I played sports growing up. I was athletic, but I never thought in a million years I would be a fitness coach. You know, it wasn't on my radar at all. And I went in there. I didn't want to just follow the coach around. I wanted I was like, you know what, my way of doing it, I'm gonna work out every class with every single, you know, person and get to I'm gonna sweat with them and figure out how they tick and let them know that I'm willing to get down and dirty with them too. I'm not just gonna tell you what to do and think that you gotta listen to me and you don't even know who I am. So I learned that and then I found my niche, you know, and, and I honest to God, it it changed my life. Because I saw that my positive energy, the, I'm at a thousand every day. I can run off of two hours of sleep, and I'm going to be going ham sandwich. Uh, by the way, by the way, that is maybe the truest thing that has been said <laughs> in this studio. Because I have watched you, and I've watched you at a DJ booth. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've watched you at a DJ booth where there is like three people around, and he is still Ryan. Help me out here. He is still like at a level thousand. <laughs> people have fun he likes people make make people smile and he, i mean he likes to hug people he likes that personal connection you can see that with people like every time jody goes up and hugs somebody or jody's around people are happy people are smiling he brings happiness to people thanks brother yeah he does a great job at it you know and and when you when you really it's embrace great. yeah it is yeah. you know you you put it out people you know if i'm running on fumes I, I know people are like, you know, they, some people are morning people, even throughout the day. You know, some of us don't really start really moving and grooving until like one or two. But whatever the case is, like you said, whether there's three people or a thousand people, I'm bringing the damn heat because I know that they're relying on me. You know, I even if I'm having I, I don't want to have a bad day and I choose not to. People say, how do you do it every day? I'm like, literally, like I just said earlier, it is a, a choice. It's that simple. So what fuels you then? So when you when you are having that low day, when you haven't had any sleep or it's just it's just tough because everybody has a tough day. For sure. So what fuels you? When they come in, whether it be at a club or at the gym or just walking down the street and I see it, their eyes light up, that that's all I need. Yep. Just seeing them smile because I'm going to take that smile. I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to throw it right back. 
You, it's all about throwing energy. What are you going to do with your energy? You're going to throw negative shade on everybody, bring people down. It's easy to be those type of people, a negative person, somebody that doesn't feel like they care. They don't know why they're here. But I'm telling you, when you did give a little, you get so much more in return. And it ain't money that you get received. You're going to be getting that that vibe. You know, your vibe attracts your tribe. What type of tribe are you trying to build? And that's how you change your community is by attracting the right people. You can't win everybody. But if we all, each one, reach one. No, you can't. <laughs> you know, it won't happen. But if each one of us try to reach one, that's how it changes. We got to chip away. You know, I can't just knock down a tree with one swing. Ryan might be able to. I'm going to have to chip yeah, away. Yeah, he's a freak. You know, he's a freak of nature. <laughs> and he just he just took off the jacket, so <laughs> right. he's going to show everybody. Bow, shoulders, on camera. <laughs> but just, just know that you have something within you that's powerful, whether, you know, you think it or not. And when you find out what it is, don't let it don't let it go to waste. Please don't because we all have something special that somebody can relate to. You know, and if we 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 realize that, that's when we start really changing lives and that's why I do everything I do. You know, I it kind of makes me makes me think a little bit about you just talked about it. you see somebody as you're walking down the street, you see their eyes light up that a friend told me several months ago about just hey, when you're walking down the street, and this is easier because Ryan, we work in a, in a little downtown community, but when you're walking down the street and you see people coming the other way, Make eye contact. Yep. Do something simple. Make eye contact. Say hello. And so I've tried to do that like purposefully every single time. And, man, it does make a difference. Absolutely. It makes a huge difference in, I think, in them, in you, yep. just to make that one little effort. Yep. I, I mean, I'm tr I try it, but some people are scared of me. <laughs> right, I, well, I, you I, know, I mean, when you're 6'5", when you're jacked and tan, <laughs> which is an inside joke for those listening to the other podcast. Exactly. <laughs> speaking in front of the chamber and different stuff, it never fails that I have at least a few people come up and tell me, oh, you're smarter than I thought you were. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you know, and they're like... I, I really want to make a Fort Osage joke right oh, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doors open. Because I'm like, should I be offended? Is that a compliment or should I be offended? You know, <laughs> you know, you're passionate about what you do and you're very, you know, you're very educated with what you do. And I'm like, you know, and so many people have come into the gym that have been like intimidated or scared to meet me you know, and they're like, you're the big teddy bear. Like, he, I think you just said it this morning. For that, sure. Right? I did. Bear. You know, it's like, don't judge a book by its cover. You know, if I'm walking down the street and I try to make eye contact with you, a lot of people will look away. I'm like, hey, I'll give you a hug. My, my, my little Asian friend right here will give you a hug, too. <laughs> just one, priest. <laughs> so, yeah, don't judge a book by its cover. Make make relationships. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip it and go over to, go back to you now. So, Ryan, so what's let's talk about your, your why. Because you just talked about a huge change in the last two or three years where you've I think intentionally learned to have compassion, to to be empathetic. So, so what's the what was that impetus? 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 Why well, I feel like the words are like I leaving me. Yeah. Um, so, but 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 what what was that? What was the thing that that made you change? I think it's just growing and looking at life differently. You know, looking at the world differently, and and I'm just grow uh, my compassion has grown. And just working with people, you know, when people sit down across my desk that that come to me that want to work with me and change their life, they they usually they usually spill off, you know, whether you know how they feel about themselves. Like I've heard some people say some pretty negative things about themselves sitting at my desk at the consultation, you know, and that's helped build my compassion too because I'm like this person is really struggling with this, you know, and I have to be more compassionate because with my body type, I mean, I'm kind of genetically blessed, you know, like I've always been. Like tall, jerk. And lean, I know. So, so I've had, <laughs> I've had to be more compassionate to that. I haven't had to work as hard as this person might have might have had to work to get to where they want to be. So, you know, my why is is like it's changing people's lives. Like not only just physically in the gym, but when I work with my clients, I change their mindset. There's people that have walked out my walked in my gym and sat down in front of my desk, and six months later they are a completely different person. I mean, all aspects of their life, their marriage, their relationships, their job. You know, just I try to get people to go out and have fun and live life differently, you know, and that's what fuels me. Like when I see somebody that just, I mean, I was just talking to a client this morning that her life is completely different than the day I met her, you know, and, you know, honestly, when she came in, she was on the verge of divorce with her husband. They were both out of shape, got them both in shape, and now their relationship's better than it's ever been. You know, That's now, awesome. You know, and it's, it's just helping, or just people that were you know, miserable in their life and, and, and just flipping their mindset. Like, that's what fuels me. Like, that's my why. 
you know, and I'm trying to build a future for my son. I'm trying to instill, instill all this stuff that I preach on the podcast and I preach to my clients. I'm trying to instill that in my son so he can be a better man. You know, like just taking these life lessons and teaching them to him and seeing him implement it. Like, I love that. You know, that's my favorite part of my life right now is, is raising my son. Well, and there and there is nothing like seeing your 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 child kind of take on some of those things. You know, we do a lot of a lot of stuff around the downtown area here and some different things in the community. And to watch him try to follow suit, or or you know, I always it, it, the funny story for us is um, you know we volunteer during downtown days every year, and my son for the last four or five years asks every year he wants to work the info booth like that's his thing. He's like <laughs> he's like Dad, we doing a session. Do we get to sign up? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, and I I don't understand it because that's the most boring shift there is. Right. <laughs> but but you know he wants to be involved. Yeah, it, it's so important. You know, um, I made a post the other day, a picture of me and my son, and talking about the Jesse Itzler who I saw speak, and he was talking about you know tips on how to raise your children. And one of the things that really hit home is you know like you need to show your children you doing difficult things. Like you being able to start a business, succeed in life, and do difficult things, because your kids are always watching you. You know, so if they can see you doing it, it builds the confidence in them that they can do it too when they get older. And that's so important when your kids, when you're raising your kids, because if you're always speaking negatively around your kids, they pick up on that, and then they have that, you know, that negative thought process, and they say those negative things because they hear that's what you say. Right, so, it's contagious. Like, you know, just like we do in the gym with all my clients. We're constantly building confidence because, as we know in life, confidence is a game changer in all aspects of your life. If you're confident in what you do, you're going to be, be you're going to have better relationships. You're going to do better at your job. You're just going to li- look at life differently if you have confidence. You know, and my son right now he's struggling with confidence and cockiness. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a that's a mind. that's a tough balance. You know, so we got to find that that you know got to be humble in between. So I'm teaching him what humble means. You know, and. Um, so it, it's if you build confidence in the gym and with my son, like everything he does, you know, it's always it's always supporting him, always building up his confidence. So you know, but like I said, if it gets a little too high, you got to bring it back down. He's got to have a great level of confidence. Right. That, like right now, that's my favorite thing to do. And you just talked about it, like showing them you doing hard things. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a really cool concept. And and so one of the big differences between me now as a as an entrepreneur and me before as a corporate lackey. Um, is I'm trying to make up. I always feel like I'm trying to make up for time where I spent majority of my life away from the house in an office, or even jobs before that where I traveled some and I wasn't home. Um, I always laughed that my son was two weeks old and 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 I was gone for two weeks traveling for a job. I'm home a lot more, but I also bring work home with me a lot more. So that almost makes me feel a little bit better that he can see me. He can see me working to make in, the in things the element, happen. Right. How, I, but I also want to make sure that I'm present. Yeah. So I'm trying to find that balance. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a hard balance to do because I have my son 50% of the time. So, you know, all this work that I want to do and get done, I try not to do it with him so I can, you know, spend my time with him. But I'm going to repeat these. I posted them on Facebook the other day, and most of you guys probably didn't read them. But I want to repeat this because these are very good nuggets from this Jesse Itzler. You know, when he talks about raising your kids, he says you need to praise the effort, not the result. Okay, so if your kid's doing something, huge, that is you know, huge. And they give effort in it. I preached this to my son not too long ago, even before I heard this guy talk. You know, like at practice, at MMA, at football practice, as long as you go hard and you pay attention, I don't care if you're the best kid on the team or not. You know, you don't have to win every championship. We're not going to give you a participation trophy, but you have to give effort. Okay, and that's what everything out in life is because you're not going to be good at everything you try. Uh, so praise the effort, not the result, and then uh, let them experience disappointment. You know, so let your kid experience disappointment, lose a game, not be, not do good at something. Let them experience disappointment because it helps them build grit. So I think that was a good one too. Uh, show well, and you got to learn how to learn from a mistake, right? Yeah, exactly, and that's what that's what that's what that's talking about. Uh, let the, show them you doing difficult things. Um, your kids are on their own journey. Okay, I was a football, a college football player. I, I when I when my wife got pregnant with my son. I was like, yeah, he's going to be, you know, the next tight end, uh, Tony Gonzalez, you know, like I was all pumped up. He hates football. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm not going to take him and force him to play football. Of course, he's on his own journey. So the next one is your kids are on their own journey. That's hard. I love baseball. My kid hates it. Yeah. Can't stand baseball. You know, but you don't need to push them into doing something they don't want. Let them develop in the person they're going to be. Yeah, not find out their be. own. You're right. You know, and there's so many parents, you know, that – their kid hates baseball, but they make them play baseball for nine months out of the year in tournament leagues, and they're not, right, right. They're not able to be a kid and find their own path. Your kid is on your own, his own journey. You know, I have a tattoo on my arm for my son. It says, 
I will be the one to guide you, but never hold you down. You know, so like I'm gonna guide him through life, but he's gonna do the things that he wants to do until he gets in trouble. Then, <laughs> then I'm guide his ass right to his bedroom. But, <laughs> and then uh, the last one he said was, uh, "Let them conquer disappointment." So let them experience it, and then let them conquer disappointment. So if they, you know, if they lose a basketball game or something, and they're disappointed in it, let them go back and give more effort to try to do better. So I thought those were great. great oh, those are, that's heat. Yeah, it's good stuff. Well, I, want, I appreciate you guys coming on and just talking a little bit about, I think, just about being positive, about getting involved, about doing something to make people feel better. I, I, just one more time, let's say if people want to get involved, if they want to see what you're doing in the community, how can they find out? How can they get involved? Uh, we're going to be posting all our events on Shred KC Facebook page. So Shred KC fa- Facebook page, or you can go to www.shredkc, two Ds and shred, dot com and, get on, and put in your information to get on our mailing list. And then you can get uh, email updates on what we have going on, or even our Instagram at ShredKC. And or just come by the gym, check it out. There you go. All right, come meet yeah. us. Yeah. And then I'm going to do as a uh, as a producer. I'm going to just get him to do one shameless plug. You can also listen to the Shred podcast. Go find that along with keep listening to the Lee Summit Town Hall podcast. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, we're all <laughs> I'm going to blame the cold medicine. Well, guys, thank you very much, and we will talk to everybody next time. Thank you. See you guys. You have been listening to Lee Summit Town Hall, a link to Lee Summit podcast with hosts Nick Parker and Jason Norberry. A proud member of the Fredcast Network, you can subscribe to this podcast on most of your favorite podcast apps and catch us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for all the news, analysis, and conversations on the Lee Summit community. Connect with us on Facebook at Link to Lee Summit or on Twitter at LS Town Hall. Thank you.